Hey guys, it's Mr. G, and this video is going to be a follow-up video to my previous video where I created a block that could search through an unsorted list and report back the position of the value it was looking for. There were some issues with my code that I briefly mentioned in the video, in the previous video, and that I wrote about in the description. But overall, my students came to me telling me that JavaScript was confusing to understand and that was not my goal for the previous video. So I made a mistake in using a feature of the for each block in JavaScript that doesn't exist in the snap version, which is the ability to keep track of which item in a list we're looking at with the for each block. So if you look over here at line five in JavaScript, this position parameter only exists inside of the for each block in JavaScript, whereas in snap, we don't have that same functionality. So in JavaScript, the for each block knows where it's at, but in snap, the for each block doesn't. So on the left, you'll see that I created another script variable to keep track of position. Every time I looked at the next item in the list, I incremented the position by one. So you see that in the for each block, I changed the position by one so that I can keep track of where I'm at. And actually now that I'm looking at it, I'm noticing that I probably should have initialized position to zero. So let me just add that quickly. There we go. So I initialize position to zero and snap. I don't have to do that in JavaScript because it automatically knows where it's looking. Another bug in my code is that my algorithm will go through every single item of a list, even if it finds the number that it's looking for. Whereas in the BJC instructions, it says to report back the position of the value you're looking for the first time you see it. So what I mean by that is that suppose you're looking at for the number 54 and the unsorted list has a couple of 54s in it. So my code will report back the position of the last 54 that it sees and not the first one. So that's wrong. I'm going to fix that first right now. So instead of storing the position in a variable called result, which I did in line four and which I did in the script variables here on the left in snap, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to use report or return within my for each block. Okay. Report is special. It's a special block because it will cause snap or JavaScript to stop where it's at and not continue in the code or not to look at the next number or anything after the report block is triggered. So think of it like a video game where like it's game over the second your character gets hit. You don't want the character or the player to keep running around if they're supposed to like, you know, end the game. So you have to use it really carefully, same thing in Snap or in JavaScript, but this is like a perfect example of when it's appropriate to use report inside of a for each or a for block. Let me show you an example of what I mean before I actually show you guys in this code. Over here, I have a for each block that will go through every single item of a list, one, two, three, four, five, and it'll say the item for two seconds each time. So if I click it, you'll notice that it says one, then two, then three, then four, then five. Great. Now, what I can do is if I add this if block that I've already created. So what this if block does is it's going to check to see if the item equals three. And if the item equals three, then I'm going to use the report block. It's over. Now, this block actually won't show that it's over because this is a command block and report will only really work with reporter blocks. But what's going to happen is you'll see that if I run this, it's going to do one, then two, and then three, and then it's going to stop. It literally just stopped. You saw that the, the outline surrounding the for each block kind of went away, the color. And that means that my, my block has stopped running. And the reason for that is because of report. So you have to be really careful when using this, but what you have to realize is that when I'm going through every item in a list, if I find what I'm looking for, I don't have to keep going through every single item after that. What I'm going to do is instead of setting result equal to position, I'm going to report the position. And what this will do is it'll stop the entire position block from running after it finds the first instance of the value that I'm looking for. So let me actually use report and I'm going to report the position. This is interesting because if you think about it, I never actually like reset the value of result. So I set result equal to not in list in the beginning, and then it never gets changed. So I could actually remove it. So what I'm going to do is remove set result. 
and I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove result completely. So I'm just gonna set it equal to position. I'm gonna remove the second position, and you guys can see that result is gone. Let me just make sure that this position is the same one, change position by one, and this should work. So the way that this works is that if it ever, if it ever sees that the item equals the number that I'm looking for, which it came from over here, and the item comes from over here, from the for each block, if the item ever matches the, the number that I'm looking for, it's going to report the position and this entire block will stop running. I see one problem here. I'm reporting result at the end and there is no result. So I'm just gonna remove result and I'm gonna report not in list if it ever gets to this point. So if we go through every single item of a list and we never find an item equal to the number we're looking for, it's going to never hit this report, it's never going to report the position, and it's going to instead report not in list. This is kind of like our catch, like our safety net. So if it doesn't find the position and doesn't report the position, it will hit this line, this last line right here, and it's going to report not in list. So I'm going to hit apply, and that should be a good fix for my block the way that it is right now. So if I do find the value I'm looking for, I don't have to then keep looking through more items. It's going to report out of it and we're done. I'm going to make the fix in JavaScript just to be a little bit more consistent or just to you know show you guys how it's done. So I'm, I removed the result. I'm actually going to keep this string, but I removed the result var uh, variable on line four. And instead, if it never finds the value, I'm going to return not in list. And if you guys remember from my previous video, return is the same thing as report in JavaScript. So I'm going to return not in list. And if the number equals the item that I'm looking for, I'm going to report or return the position. Now, I'm actually going to make a fix to the JavaScript to make it look more like the snap version. So I'm going to remove the ability of JavaScript to keep track of position, and I'm going to store it myself over here. I'm going to create a variable called position, set it equal to zero, initialize it to zero here. And what I'm going to do is every single time I do the next for each, I'm going to change the position by one. So I'm going to set position equal to position plus one. All right, so now you can see how Snap and JavaScript look pretty much exactly the same. And I hope this was helpful for using for each. Now there is another way to do this without using the for each block, and that is to use the for block. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now just using Snap. I actually hinted at using the for block in my previous video because I thought it would be a little bit easier to use. So instead of using the for each block, I'm going to throw all of that stuff out and I'm going to use our for block. Now for block creates a local variable called i right in here, even though I could rename it. And i will go from one up until whatever number I want. So if I want to go through every item of a list, I'm really only going to go up to the item or the length of the list as the last item, right? So I am going to bring over the length of list block and I'm just gonna go from one all the way up to the length of the list. What I'm then gonna do is I'm going to use i as it changes to look at the position at i. So for example, when we run the, first the four block for the first time, i is gonna equals one, so we're gonna look at the item one of the list. All right, and then after it does everything inside of the four block, it's gonna increment i by one, and then we're gonna look at item two. So I'm going to use this item of block. I can't use it like right now because it's a reporter, but I'm going to show you guys kind of outside of this for block what it'll look like. So I'm going to change, instead of setting it equal to one here, I'm going to set it equal to i. And i is going to change automatically as it goes through the entire list. And I should actually add that here, that I'm going to look at item i of the list. And what I can do is I can check to see if the item i of the list equals the number I'm looking for. So I'm gonna bring in a for, uh, not a for block, but an if block. And if this item that I'm looking at, which is going to be this, equals the number that I'm looking for, okay, right here is where I can use my report block. Because if I do find that the item i of the list 
equals the number that I'm looking for, I can just report out of this block. So I'm just going to report. Now, I've been keeping track of the position using i, if you think about it, so I don't have to create another variable called position or keep track of it some other way. I could actually just report i, and that's pretty cool. Now, if I go through the entire list and I never find the value that I'm looking for, and I never report i, then I want to report not in list. Not in list. Remember, this is kind of like our catch-all. So if it never finds a number, the number that we're looking for, it's going to report not in list because this report block will be triggered and this one will never get triggered. So I'm actually going to test this out, see if it works, and just make sure that it works. So position of number 54 in the unsorted list, which is called unsorted list. Let me just reinitialize that in case it wasn't. It should report back three. And when I click it, it does. It reports back three. If I change this to 1, it should report 2. If I change it to 86, it should report back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it does. All right, so it looks like my block works. Now let me just try putting in a number that does not exist, like 65. It's not in this list, so I'm going to click on this, and it should report not in list. And it does. All right, so that is the other way you can do this, the other way that I was kind of hinting at that I thought would be a little bit easier for some of you guys. But hopefully this was helpful at showing you guys how to do this. And I will see you in the next video where I'll show you guys how to look through a sorted list in the most efficient manner using binary search. Oh, by the way, guys, everything we've done in this video is linear search. Cough, cough.